Hi there. Today, I am going to be talking about Wilder's birth story, and I have filmed this video many, many a time, and we are going to try again, because I want it to be perfect. A few things. I am not wearing any makeup. I didn't even fill in my eyebrows for this. Is it a mistake? Probably. Also, I have everything written down in detail on my iPad in front of me, so if you see me looking down a bunch, that is why I apologize, but I have had three kids. My brain doesn't work the way it should, and I have to read what I've written or I will forget everything. Let's get into it. I woke up Sunday morning about 3.30ish to go to the bathroom. At this point, I was peeing every hour on the hour because I'd like to stay hydrated. And when you're pregnant, that bites you in the ass and you have to pee constantly. Anyways, went to the bathroom, came back, laid down, had a contraction. Very exciting. <laughs> I started having them continually. So I downloaded my contraction app and began timing them. They were lasting about 30 to 45 seconds and they were coming every five to 15 minutes, definitely very irregular. Obviously they were uncomfortable, most contractions are, but they were totally and completely bearable. So I went back to sleep and I woke up at about seven with the kids and I was still having contractions. Nothing had changed their duration or the time apart. It was all exactly the same. I wanted to rest as much as I possibly could just because I tend to have really long labors. So I tried to stay in bed. <laughs> However, this just made my anxiety get really extreme. So I quickly got up, showered. I ordered groceries because one of my midwives had a really special diet. And if she was gonna be here for hours on end, I wanted to make sure there were options for her as well as the kids. And then I am very specific about the food I want after I give birth. So I wanted to make sure I had options. And after I ordered groceries, I decided I wanted to go and pick up some smoothies. And the smoothie place was right next door to a Chipotle. So I also went and got myself a nice burrito. Yes, I was having contractions while in Chipotle and I took a picture of myself with my Chipotle because I thought I was hilarious. We decided to head to the party just because this was the last time I would get to play with the kids for a while. And there is a big grassy retention area in the back of our park. So it's basically just like flat grass and then on either side it's huge hills. So me and Atticus were running down across the fields, up the other side. And I wasn't trying to induce labor or, you know, get things going. I was just trying to do anything I could to make my labor go smoother. So I was playing, trying to stay very active. My contractions were irregular, but still consistent. They hadn't um, gotten more intense in any way. They were still only 30 seconds and five to 15 minutes apart. We came home and I had a few projects I wanted to get done. So Scott helped me set up a little section for my yarn on the wall. We started deep cleaning the house, just little things. I started to get a little bit panicky because it was Sunday night and that means Scott was gonna have to go into work in the morning and I had a very specific fear that I was going to have to labor all day alone with the kids. And that is exactly what ended up happening. However, I did wake up Monday morning at about 4.30 and I had lost my bloody show, which was very interesting. I had never noticeably lost my mucus plug with my previous labors. And um, so seeing that bloody show was pretty gross. I definitely wasn't expecting it. But anyways, Scott got up, went to work. My contractions were exactly the same as they had been for over 24 hours now. And I just kept the kids very busy all day Monday. This was the 15th, I believe, of March. We deep cleaned the lizard tanks, cleaned the fish tanks, just did little irregular things that I knew I wanted to get done before the baby came. And we had a very normal, day <laughs> which was crazy because i was literally having contractions like you know six times an hour the day went on nothing happened and went to sleep monday night and i was still totally able to sleep through all of my contractions which was a big blessing tuesday morning at about 4 30 i woke up and at this point i had been having contractions for exactly 48 hours hours. When I came back in bed and I laid down, I started to have another contraction. 
and when it hit about the 30 second mark, which is when it usually lessened, it picked up and got way more intense and went on for what felt like forever. It was definitely over a minute long, but I had stopped timing my contractions since I had been doing this for two days. So Scott woke up, started getting ready for work, and I started timing them again. And I had another contraction that was over two minutes long. And I talked to Scott about it, and I was like, hey buddy, I think this might be the real deal. And he had to still go into work because he was opening up the warehouse for the guys. And if he didn't go in and open it up, nobody could get into the building. So he drove to work. I watched his location on my phone because that's the type of wife I am. And when I saw he had been there for a few minutes, I called him and I was like, dude, these contractions are getting pretty intense. Please come home. <laughs> At this point, my anxiety was starting to get a little bit out of control and I could feel myself spiraling. <laughs> and I, it was taking everything in me not to go into a full-blown panic attack. If you follow me on Instagram, you might know that I wasn't exactly planning for this to be a home birth. When I got pregnant, I wanted to do a hospital birth with the midwife I had with Winnie to come and be a doula. That was like my ideal situation, was being in the hospital and my previous midwife was gonna come and be my doula. I thought it was perfect. I found out I was pregnant in July and I was really thinking that, you know, COVID was going to be almost gone by the time I gave birth. Obviously that didn't happen. So at about 20 weeks, we decided we were going to do a birth center instead. The birth center ended up wanting to charge us thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to give birth there and I wasn't willing to pay that. So then we decided that we were going to once again try to do the hospital and my midwife was going to come and be my doula. But a few weeks before my due date, they changed their rules again because of COVID and doulas weren't going to be able to go and be at the hospital. So we ended up kind of having to do a home birth. It was pretty much the only option for me. We were playing around with renting a hotel room and then my parents have a travel trailer. We were actually thinking of just like driving that somewhere and doing the birth in there, but it just made sense to try to do it at home. I also wanna preface this with saying I have had two unsuccessful home births before this, but both of those situations, me and my baby were completely safe. They were never emergency situations per se, but that transfer from home to the hospital was pretty traumatic for me especially my second time around because I was actively pushing and I really didn't want to go through that again. So that was why I didn't want to do a home birth. It wasn't that there was anything unsafe happening. It was just, I felt like I was going to have a hard time laboring knowing that was a poss possibility and I wanted to avoid a transfer at any cost. So I thought just being already at the hospital was going to be the easiest for me. But again, we ended up choosing to try and have another home birth. I had been spending months mentally preparing for this birth, especially when it ended up being that I was going to have to birth at home. I started doing birth trauma therapy, and then I also saw a hypnotherapist. I also deleted all social media off my phone because that can be a big trigger for my anxiety, and I needed to be as cool, calm, and collected as I could be for this. With hypnobirthing, hypnobabies, whichever one you do, the entire concept behind it is that you're supposed to be as relaxed as you possibly can while in labor so that it's pain-free. My hypnotherapist told me that I was basically incapable of relaxing. And I was like, you know what? That makes so much sense. I had been trying to do self-hypnosis for a few weeks. I had bought several courses. I was doing a lot of reading and I felt like it was doing more harm than good. I was getting really stressed out every time I tried to put myself into hypnosis. And then when I was at my hypnotherapist, I started getting really dizzy and almost passed out while she was hypnotizing me. And she said she calls that the whirlies and that it happens a lot with her patients that are really high anxiety. So she told me that if it's stressing me out to try to relax, just do whatever I felt like I needed to do while in labor. So that was the plan. Once Scott got home, Atticus also woke up, so it was about 6.30, and I made him a huge breakfast, and I made stuff for Winnie too, even though she was still sleeping. I showered, I got a little bit ready, I did a bunch of dishes, 
clean the kitchen. I was planning on knitting. I didn't have any time to. Um, but I was just staying up on my feet because with Winnie, it wasn't the pain that overwhelmed me. It was just my anxiety that crippled me through that labor. So if I was up and moving around, I was able to function and stay calm and focused. There's this mantra in one of the Hypno Babies CDs and it says something to the effect of, I deserve a calm and comfortable birth. I told my hypnotherapist that I liked this and I also talked to my midwife about it. And my hypnotherapist changed it a little bit for me. And she changed it to, I am having a peaceful and comfortable birth. Something that was tangible, something that I could say and encourage myself that I am having this, I am doing this. So I whispered that to myself throughout my entire labor. At about 7.30, my contractions were pretty much constant. They hadn't stopped. They were just coming and coming and getting more intense. And I hadn't talked to my midwife at all through the entire like 48 hours of abdominal labor, losing my bloody show, these contractions, I hadn't talked to her. So Scott was like, it's time to give her a call. I called her, I was like, hey, I think this is it. She was like, okay, I'm coming over right away because it sounds like you're already in transition. I was starting to get really nauseous and very shaky and I had never experienced that feeling before while in labor. She got to my house at 8.39 and something really cool that was happening was that since I was so cool, calm and collected, I could feel exactly what my body was doing and I could feel him moving down into my pelvis through my contractions and it was crazy and so encouraging because I could feel that my body was actually doing something. With my past labors, it was like, dang, I have been having contractions for hours. Is anything happening? I'm not dilating. But this time I could literally like feel him lowering, getting ready to come out. And I also had decided this time that I didn't want her to check to see how dilated I was at all because it was always really discouraging with my past two births. So I don't know, that was one of like the most amazing things I've ever experienced was feeling him move down and knowing what my body was doing. I loved that part. I had read this birth story in one of the books where this lady sank herself through her labor. Nothing else could keep her calm or focused except for when she was singing songs. And I took singing lessons growing up. It's something that has always been really important to me. So that's what I ended up doing. I put on um, an Ed Sheeran playlist that I had made because that's always what I use when I'm having panic attacks. And I just sang songs through every single contraction. And then I ended up picking one song, which was Give Me Love. And it's always been one of my favorites. And I pretty much had that on repeat for most of um, the labor and I was just singing it and it did wonders. So if you're having a really hard time grounding yourself and staying focused, I totally recommend if you have like an important playlist, actually singing out loud, not just listening to it, but singing because then you're forcing yourself to breathe, which is something I always had trouble with. I tend to like hold my breath through contractions. Um, but I thought that made such a difference for me. My midwife got there at 839 and my contractions were not stopping at all. I was very focused though, and I had a way easier time staying focused if my contractions were constant. I found that when they were coming and going and there was a break in between, I had such a hard time going back into the next contraction. So I appreciated them when they got constant because I could just stay in the zone. I was having pretty bad back labor, which I was a little bit bummed about, and Scott was helping me through it behind me, uh, lifting my hips up, trying to do anything he could to make it bearable. So here's the thing. With Winnie, I got trapped on my birthing ball. And by that, I mean my anxiety was so extreme. I was like, I am not moving from this ball. I will sit here and you cannot get me to move. And this time, about two weeks before I gave birth, I told my midwife, I said, Jenny, move me. If you see me doing something and you think I would have a faster, easier labor if I did something else, just tell me to move, tell me to do it. If I say no, say, Destiny, let's get this baby out of you. Go walk a mile. I was like, move me. It's okay if you're assertive. It's okay if you're pushy. Tell me what to do so that I have an easier labor because I do not want to be doing this all day. I had been standing in our, in our kitchen the entire time pretty much because I was leaning forward on top of our countertops and swaying back and forth. It helped my back labor a lot. It was, I was still moving around, able to be active. So it made my anxiety a lot better. I was able to stay focused and that's where I had been but I was starting to get really, really shaky. And so she told me she wanted me to move into our bedroom, leaned up against Atticus's bed on my knees. So I was pretty much in the same position, but this time I was kneeling instead of standing. It made my anxiety a little bit worse because again, I wasn't moving around, 
but it was a lot easier on my body. It was about 9.40 at this point, and my second midwife got there. I started feeling the need to bear down a little bit, just doing little test pushes. They weren't full, intense pushes, but my body, I could just feel it slowly, like getting ready to start actively pushing. But my waters still hadn't broken, so my midwife asked if she could check to see what the heck was going on, and my waters were still totally intact. Everything was fine. Like I mentioned, Scott had been behind me the entire time helping with my back, but I asked him to get in front of me and hold my hands so that I could look at him and focus on him. He tends to be the calm for me during the storm, and I knew that if I could just look at him, I could stay focused and get this baby out. I hadn't really had any plans on how I was going to push. I kind of expected to do it in a squatting position just because I feel like a lot of home births end up being squatting position. But since I had been doing little test pushes for a while, my midwife asked me to go and lay down on the bed and be on my back and she would rotate me. So she rotated me to the left, I pushed a few times, rotated me to the right, I pushed a few times and then I was just straight on my back pushing. And I pushed a lot. After I had pushed what felt like to be a thousand times, they kept saying, we can see his head, he's coming, we can see his head. And at that moment, all my calmness flew out the window and I started panicking and I looked at Scott and I was like, dude, I cannot do this. And my midwife was like, Destiny, you're doing it. We are not driving to the hospital right now. This baby is coming out of you. I am not that type of person that likes to watch birth videos. I don't like to see pictures of people giving birth. It really grosses me out. I've never wanted to see my own babies being born or like a mirror. That is not me. But I suddenly felt the urge to feel his head coming out because I honestly didn't believe that he was coming out. I thought that my midwife and Scott were lying to me because they were trying to encourage me to keep going. I thought they were tricking me, like I honestly did. So I was like, you know what, let's see if they're telling the truth. And I reached down and I could feel his head. And at that moment, a switch flipped in my brain and I was like, what the heck, we're getting this baby out right now. I literally think I whispered, get out of me. I was like, baby, get the heck out of me. I don't wanna do this anymore. And I pushed and like half of his head popped out. And my midwife was like, Destiny, you need to slow and gently push right now so that you don't tear. And I was like, how the heck am I supposed to do that? I have half of a baby's head hanging out of my vagina. But I did it. And I slowly, gently pushed his head out. And then with the next push, the rest of him flew out. And I didn't tear, which was the dream of mine. They put him up on my chest. He was extremely purple and red. It was a little bit concerning. He also had a bit of a hard time breathing. It wasn't anything like, you know, emergency situation, but he was definitely having a hard time. So once the um, cord stopped pulsing and they cut it, they took him and cleared his airways a little bit. But yeah, his face was super bruised because of how fast I pushed him out. I like test pushed for 20 minutes, but I only ended up actively pushing for 10 minutes. But I pushed a lot in those 10 minutes. Like it was hard, intense pushes. My midwife said she was shocked at how much I had to push considering this was my third birth. So there's that for you. He was born at 10, 11 a.m. I believe, and he was my smallest baby, only seven pounds and two ounces, but we were surprised at how big he was actually. I had been measuring two to four weeks behind my entire pregnancy, and it turns out it's because I had like no amniotic fluid. We don't know where it went. My ultrasounds were all fine. Um, but I had pretty much nothing. She kept asking if I had been leaking throughout the past few weeks. I hadn't noticed anything. <laughs> My waters never broke. I just had basically no amniotic fluid. So that explained why I had gained way less weight this pregnancy than I usually did and also why I was measuring so much smaller because he was just like a very dry baby. He peeled so much the first few days after he was born because he was just so dry. I also got to encapsulate my placenta for the first time. I had always wanted to do that and I had never been able to. So that was super exciting. My midwife brought the placenta over in a bowl and gave me a tour of it. She picked it up, showed me how everything worked, where the baby was sitting. It was amazing, I loved it. Scott hates placentas, he thinks they're really gross, but he was a, he was a good sport through that placenta tour. I was very proud of him. Atticus had been waiting nine long months to meet his baby brother. Almost every single day he came and asked, if the baby was being born today. He was so excited. So pretty much as soon as I was cleaned up and the baby was breathing normally, we brought him over to meet him. And we wanted Wolf and Winnie to meet them separately just because together they get super excited. We expected his reaction. It was beautiful. I loved it so much. But Winnie's reaction to her baby brother was so magical. She 
became obsessed immediately. And when Scott took her back over to my parents' house so that I could rest a little bit, she begged for hours to come back and see her baby brother. It wasn't me she wanted. I didn't exist anymore. It was the baby and it was so, so special. It was really strange not going to a hospital. I gave birth at 10 in the morning and a few hours later that night we were tucking the kids into their bed and Scott was playing video games while I nursed the baby. It's like nothing had even happened. It was literally like a stork came and dropped this baby off and there he was and this was just our life now. It was so weird. There wasn't this crazy transition of new normal coming home from the hospital. It was just like, hey, this is our life. So weird. I think there's a lot of pros and cons to doing a home birth, just like there's a lot of pros and cons to doing a hospital birth. A day or two after I gave birth, my midwife came over because you get a lot more postpartum checkups when you have a midwife. And we were having a conversation and she asked how I was feeling about the birth. And I was honestly having a really hard time processing everything. I had my dream birth, like I really did. I wrote down exactly how I wanted my birth to be and it pretty much followed it like to the T. I wanted my labor to be six hours long. I thought that was the perfect length for me. It wasn't too fast where I was gonna feel overwhelmed, but it wasn't dragging on forever where I was exhausted and felt like I couldn't push through. It literally was like half an hour less than six hours. It was exactly what I wanted. I wanted to be well rested and able to function after I gave birth. And even though I had had predominant labor for 48 hours, I was still able to sleep through all of those contractions and I felt amazing. I wanted to push for a very short amount of time and even though I did like practice pushes for 20 minutes, I only actively pushed for 10 and so, you know, my body felt great. I didn't tear. Like I literally had the exact birth I wanted and I still hated it and I didn't want to ever do it again. And I was feeling really upset about it because with Atticus, I had an epidural and it traumatized me. And then with Winnie, I gave birth unmedicated, but it was such a horrible experience. So I thought, hey, if I can finally have my dream birth, I will love it and it'll be beautiful and magical and I'll have as many babies as I want. And that's not what happened. I had that peaceful, comfortable home birth and I still don't think I could do it again. And I'm pretty heartbroken about it because I want more kids. So I think it's really important that I share that last little bit for anyone out there because I definitely felt a little shocked after I gave birth to Wilder and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> like it was perfect and it was horrible at the same time. So there's that. There's my story. Thank you for listening. And um, 